गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू दिस वर्कशॉप वट आई कैन वट आई वॉन्ट टू डू फर्स्ट इज आई कैन प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू पुट यूर कैमराज ऑन सो यू नो दिस इज सपोज टू बी अंटरक्टिव वर्कशॉप एंड आई वॉन्ट सम फीडबैक आई वॉन्ट यू गाइज टू टॉक ड्यूरिंग द वर्कशॉप एज वेल सो इफ आई कैन रिक्वेस्ट यू टू शेयर योर वीडियो if any one of you faces challenges after sharing the video that you are because you are on a uh, on a low bandwidth if there is a challenge then you can please turn it off but if to the extent possible please turn on the video so i can see that as well okay so today what we are going to do is we are going to talk about life skills for a healthier you balancing your academic as well as your personal life before i get started i want to ask you guys what do you understand by life skills for a healthier you can i have some people just uh, talk about it what are the challenges that you face in balancing your academic and personal life okay i think some of you have low bandwidth or uh, we are not able to hear so i will keep going um i hope all of you have downloaded the soul app because we will use that for an assessment as we move forward so the first aspect that we all require in our life is balance and for us one of the most important aspects of balance is that constant pressure leads to mental fatigue which leads to a loss of balance in our lives and we all each and every one in this room and each and every one uh, not in this room suffer from that the intention is to help us all create an equilibrium in all the roles that we play and looking at how they affect our overall identity next and for all of us as we go through life as we look at the challenges whether they are challenges from a personal life perspective whether they are challenges from an academic life perspective or whether they are challenges from a professional life perspective we all develop our own unique set of coping mechanisms over the year coping mechanisms are not necessarily something that you come up with or that you work on providing for yourself some of these are mechanisms that you are probably born with then some of these are mechanisms that you build over the year and some of these are mechanisms that you get trained uh, as you move in move on in your life an important aspect of coping mechanism that we all need to do is many of these are subtle many of these are non obvious and you know they are uh, they are existing only in our subconscious some of them are extremely effective and some of them are not necessarily effective and what we all need to do from the perspective of ensuring that we are able to maintain this balance this equilibrium in life is to look at identify and train ourselves to create the right kind of coping mechanisms for ourselves this is really what mental wellness is all about helping us create coping mechanism that effectively and usefully help us in creating the life that we want to have for ourselves Can some of the perspectives so just to kind of talk about that, this violence and talk about coping mechanisms some of the perspectives that you must consider number one procrastination which is something that we all see sometimes as part of our behavior most of the times it is our defense against anxiety so procrastination is not necessarily would we wanting to delay something it is more we not wanting to start something because that is a defense mechanism for us also an extremely important part and we talk a lot about uh, you know transference when we uh, go into you know talking psychology but transference is not just something that happens in our personal lives but transference in a lot of ways is an extremely important aspect in our academic settings as well and understanding various inner conflicts in our life is what we need to do as we look at creating this equilibrium that i have that i have been talking about so the first thing that i want all of you to do you have already downloaded the soul wellness app i want you to go to the app and there is the third blob third block on the app which is called as self assessment i want you all to take a self assessment test for stress so i'm going to wait for you know the next 5 minutes for you all to be able to open the app go to the screening and assessments area and in that particular area in the self assessment area to take up the test that is called as stress 
If anybody has any challenges in finding the test, please do write on the group or please do speak up. But the test is the stress test. And when you go to the app, it will be the third block uh, as you scroll down. Okay. So let me move forward. One of the reasons why mental health is an extremely difficult aspect to understand is because there is lack of definitions around it. I mean, I have been working on mental health for many years now, and I find very few people that can even understand or comprehend the meaning of mindfulness. Well, let me actually be, be truthful and honest here. For me, the concept of mindfulness itself is extremely difficult to comprehend and understand myself. So one of the things that we did when we started working on mental health area and what I want to do today and give you is a very easy to understand definition and a very easy to understand mechanism around mental health. What I call this is the power of five adjectives. What we have done here is we have translated mental health into five easy words for everyone to understand. All that we are doing in our lives is trying to reduce three of these adjectives, which are sadness, loneliness, and stress. In Hindi, it would be duk, akelapan, and tanao. This is all that we try to do in our lives. Try to reduce sadness, loneliness, and stress. At the same time, while we are trying to reduce them, we are trying to increase happiness and peace of mind. For me, these are five extremely easy to understand concepts that really encompass the entire area of mental health. And that can provide you with aspects to consider as you move along in your life. We will talk more in detail about this as we move forward as well. But before I move forward, what I want you want to do is I want to kind of talk about the various challenges that are faced by teachers and the challenges that are faced by students. So with this audience where we are, you know, uh, in, a, in a university setting, we can look at what is it and what are the aspects that we all continuously struggle with. So this first is the challenges that in my view are the challenges that are essentially faced by teachers. Burnout. I mean, we all keep thinking about what happened to students or how our lives as students changed when the COVID pandemic came and when we all started to move towards remote working and all that. But let's think about the teachers and how their life changed. Specifically considering that we all students are more digital natives. We were born in a digital age. Doing a scroll is something that is more, uh, you know, in tune with our lives than doing something in the physical environment. While teachers came from a different aspect. So burnout, ensuring they are able to meet emotional demands of the teaching profession. And those emotional demands in a virtual environment gets amplified to the next level. The daily stress of being a teacher, understanding different learning styles that are expected or that are encompassed by various students that they are working with. Anxiety, overthinking, work-life balance, and all of these aspects that gets into everyday life of these teachers. Similarly, and while we were talking about teachers, there is huge amount of problems that we, when we look at students. And please don't get me wrong, these challenges have always been there. However, till a few years back, we all had the capability we all had the bandwidth and the availability for us to be able to handle, for us to be able to work with them. In the last few years, how our lives have changed, how the amplification of these aspects has happened, it has become virtually impossible or very difficult for us to deal with some of these. So for students, these would be academic pressure, career stress. I mean, um, so let me keep going. Anxiety and overthinking, sadness and depression and fitting in. I mean, challenges that start from the time you enter college, where you face more of the challenges of fitting in, to the time that you are about to leave college, where the career stress becomes, you know, extremely important and extremely critical in all our lives. And in between, we keep facing academic pressure. In between, we keep having anxiety and overthinking. In, in between, we keep facing various set of challenges 
that are associated with our academic work. Now, as we go ahead, I want to ask all of you, and um, you, I understand that you are in places where the, uh, the bandwidth is low, so you can even write this on the group. But I want to ask you all, have you ever worked on your mental health? Each one of you, have you ever worked on your mental health? Done anything that you would call as, yeah, I do something for my mental health? So let me give you the statistics of what I have seen. Nearly 40 to 45, and I have asked this question of, of nearly 25,000 people so far. So I have a database of what responses uh, to this question are. Nearly 40 to 45 percent people, when I ask this question, have you ever worked on your mental health? They say, I have done nothing. Never did anything in my life. Another 45 to 50 percent people would come up and say, yeah, I do something. Some would say I do journaling, some would say I do yoga, some would say I do meditation, I do some breathing exercise, I you know go to the gym, I read, I dance, I listen to music, I travel, uh, you know I go party, I meet with a friend, I part, you know whatever, some specific activity that you call as your mental health activity. Another two percent or so are people that would say. I have taken some mental health intervention in the past. So I want to see where is it that most of you people belong. So um, as I said, 40 to 45 percent people would have done nothing. Another 45 to 50 percent people would have done one activity. And an extremely small 2 percent people would come up and say that they have done some specific mental health intervention by visiting a counselor by visiting a therapist, by visiting a psychiatrist or doing some other specific, uh, you know, expert intervention in mental health. Okay, so there is uh, somebody that says I've done journaling, somebody that says I do meditation and journaling, somebody that says I do art therapies, breathing exercises, counseling. So I think we are there. I mean, this is really the kind of activities or the kind of approaches that we see from people as we look at them on an ongoing basis. So let me, let me provide an insight and I want you all to look at and work with me on this thought experiment that I call as the 16 hour theory. And what I mean by the 16 hour theory is, you know, while we look at these responses, some of these have been given here and many of you are not able to put your responses here. But as we look at responses from people, some people who have done nothing on their mental health ever, some people who have done one specific activity, and some small, very small percentage of people that have done some counseling or done some therapy. While these are the responses that we look at when we think about mental health for people. How about we consider this attribute or this aspect that every day, more than 16 hours a day. And please listen to this carefully because it is very important. Every day, more than 16 hours a day, in every action that you take, and in every decision that you make, you are doing it in the perspective of optimizing your mental health. So let's start thinking about this again. In every action that you do in your life, the action to, to sleep or the action to wake up or the action to eat or not to eat or the action to party or action to study or action to go out, action to meet someone, action to travel, in every action that you do in your life, and similarly, every decision that you do in your life, all that you are doing is optimizing your mental health. Sometimes you are optimizing your mental health from a short term perspective where there is an instant gratification. Sometimes you are doing things that may not seemingly right away be optimizing your mental health because they are more your subconscious decision making from a medium or a long-term perspective. So I want you to think about this once again. While you keep talking about mental health as you know this stigma, this taboo, something that you have never worked on and something that you consider as one specific activity, in reality, more than 16 hours a day, every day, in every action and every decision, you are optimizing your mental health.
And while you all do that, you still, so none of you almost had looked at mental wellness from this perspective in the past. So one thing I want you all to do is moving forward, start looking at every action and every decision in your life from the perspective of this 16 hour theory, from the perspective of that every action and every decision is influenced or is meant to optimize your mental health. So the reason none of you are able to get mental wellness support, so mental health becomes probably the most ubiquitous, the most time-consuming activity in your life, right? More than 16 hours a day every day, in every action, in every decision. But even when you do that, you are not always able to get mental wellness support. And the reason you are not able to get that is because you lack the vocabulary, the tools, or the framework for mental health. And what we are trying to do here in this particular workshop is to help empower you with the vocabulary, with the tools, and with the framework around mental health. Let me first talk about vocabulary. So vocabulary for me is essentially, you know, the starting point of the vocabulary is this particular workshop, where the first aspect of vocabulary for me is the 16 hour theory where you start looking at what you are doing in your life from the perspective of mental wellness. The second aspect of this vocabulary is what I talked about earlier as five adjectives. Sadness, loneliness, stress, and your need to reduce them. Happiness and peace of mind and your need to increase them. That's the second aspect of vocabulary. And similarly, that vocabulary keeps going with variety of different levels of intervention as you consider optimizing or consider looking at your mental health. Now, this mental health for some of you may be about ensuring that you are able to have a work-life balance. For some of you, it may be simply about managing or controlling your uh, emotions, your panics, your anxiety. For some of you, it may be a little more deeper where you, you know, some of you are uh, at times feeling that you are, life is not workable or some of you are feeling that you can't function properly, or you get into extreme stages of uh, sadness, extreme stages of stress, or extreme stages where you are not able to do much. And for some of you, it may simply be optimizing what you are able to do. What I want you to consider as you are looking at this is essentially this. Think about the day that you are highly functional. So the day that you are able to do a lot. And think about the day that you are not able to do as much, where you are feeling depressed, where you are feeling sad, where you are a little down, where you know something is not working well, where you have some stress on your mind. So between your best days and between your bad, day, bad days, so your good day and your bad day, I want you to think about what is the difference in the level of productivity, the level of happiness slash peace of mind, and the level of efficiency at which you are able to perform. I can ensure you for the best of you, that difference will be 20 to 30%. For those that have high, uh, you know, swings between these stages, the difference may be 50%, 100% and some cases, even multiples of that. And what mental wellness for us is about is to provide you with capabilities and tools that can help you be more happy and more peaceful, that can help you be more efficient and more productive, and that can help you perform at a level which is expected or which you expect out of yourself. And that's really what this workshop and that's really what the entire arena of mental health is meant for all of you. So as we move forward, while we will talk about tools and framework as we move along, let's first do an activity. So what I want you to do is simply, simply some relaxation. And what we will do as relaxation is simple breathing. This is the box breathing technique that we will do in the next couple of minutes. And it is very simple. And please follow along with me. What I want you to do is to close your eyes and then breathe with me. And when I say inhale, you inhale through your nose 
when i say hold you hold your breath and when i say exhale you exhale through your mouth and we will do this four times okay and the last time the fourth time we will do it slightly bigger so everyone please close your eyes and follow along with me so close your eyes and breathe in hold breathe out breathe out with the mouth second time breathe in with the nose hold breathe out with the mouth third breathe in with the nose keep your eyes closed hold breathe out with the mouth last time and this time a little longer breathe in with the nose hold hold just a little longer breathe out with the mouth please don't open your eyes now just rub your hands and put your hands on your eyes you will feel a little bit of the warmth from the rubbing on your eyes now just slowly open your eyes okay i hope everyone is back now here is the question that i want all of you to consider for yourself how many of you and think about this uniquely for yourself how many of you were simply able to forget everything else that was going on in your life and were just focused on breathing i can assure you most people that do this for these you know for some of you even, even if it was for that 2 minutes but you were able to forget all the stress you were able to forget everything that was going on in your life all the external challenges that in the next half an hour will become part of your life you were able to forget all of that at times this is really and the reason i asked you to do this is at times this is really how easy it is to get mental wellness support i am not suggesting every time you have a problem you do box breathing and you know that's what it would do for you what i want you to consider is at times it could be something which is as easy as that it's not always that you need to go to a counselor or a therapist it's not always that you need to live in the world where you have unworkability in your life it's not always that you need to accept stress as a part of your life i'm not suggesting i can take stress away from your life i'm not even suggesting that i can remove problems from your life what i am suggesting is i can empower you i can give you tools and solutions that can help you reduce them that can help you be more productive more efficient that can help you be more happy and more peaceful so what i am here to introduce you to to you is soul wellness we are a tech enabled solution that provides you the tools and solutions to work on your mental health so remember i was talking about the vocabulary the tools and the framework while we were while i have been doing a lot of work within mental wellness one of the aspects that i realized is people lack the vocabulary the tools and the framework and within this tool if we can empower people with simple solutions with a tech enabled capability for them to be able to get mental wellness support for themselves mental wellness can be made as a scalable solution available for everyone for many of us for many of us mental health support is extremely difficult to get for me mental health is a universal human right and it should be available to everyone 
not just to those that are suffering from mental health disorders, not just from those that are suffering from extreme mental health issues like depression or like anxiety, but for all of us. Because stress, because sadness, and because loneliness is a part of every human being's life. So why not provide a solution, a capability that can enable each one of us to be able to get support? And for that, we created Soul Wellness, which is the platform that I had earlier asked you to download. Now, in terms of the tools, there are three different kinds of tools that are available and that you need to know about. First part is the tools that I call as self-help tools. Self-help, as it indicates, are tools that you should be able to do or use by yourself. Things that you do in your daily life by yourself. Box breathing, for example, is a great example of a self-help tool. From a platform perspective, self-help tools could mean self-assessment. So I asked you to take a stress test earlier, which was a self-assessment. So you are simply able to go on the platform, simply be able to take a stress test and determine what kind of stress do you have in your life. Similarly, there are variety of other different kinds of tests that are available on the platform. So you are able to take a test and you are able to determine what is your proficiency in your life for that specific area. And then there is an area there which is called as goal setting. For many of us, we need that goal setting to be there for us to be able to do anything. Then there is an area on the platform which is called as mood analysis. Essentially, on an everyday basis, you plug in your mood on the platform. And it helps you identify how you have been in the historical journey of your life over the last one week, over the last 10 days, 15 days, a month or more than that. Once you have started using the platform, sometimes it will give you amazing insights. Sometimes it will tell you that the points of life where you thought you were extremely happy, your mood analysis essentially says you were not necessarily happy. Or times when you thought you were extremely stressed, you were not stressed. You were just so full of energy and so full of things that you were doing, you were actually very happy. So the mood meter will, mood analysis was essentially give you those inputs in your life. And then the platform will also give you toolkits. It will give you courses. It will give you content. It will give you information and insights on an ongoing basis. So these are what I call as self-help tools, tools that you can use by yourself with the platform. Number two is what I call as community support tools. Community support tools are tools that you can use with the community at large. And what I mean by use with the community at large, it would include journaling. So you can go to the platform and you can journal. Now, our journaling is very different than when you use an Instagram or when you use a Facebook or some other social networking platform. Number one, on our platform, there is always going to be a capability for anonymity. So whatever you do, whatever you put over there is for you. Nobody is going to be able to identify you. Second, we also give you an option of my diary so that whatever you do, you don't share it and it is just kept as my diary for you. And number three, it's a dedicated mental health platform so the conversations here are very mental health driven. Unlike a social networking platform where you talk about food that you don't eat, places that you don't go to, people that you don't meet, clothes that you don't wear, uh, you know, life that you don't have. Here, because it is a dedicated mental health platform, people come up with and share real stories. People come up with and share their real lives and are able to get support through journaling and through interacting and through networking with each other. Over on the platform, you will also see an area that is called as support group. There are nearly 35 to 40 odd support groups on the platform. There is a support group for stress. There is a support group for procrastination. There is a support group for women empowerment. There is a support group for teenage issues and a support group for anxiety and a support group for depression and so on and so forth. In these support groups, like-minded people are able to get help in the specific area that they require support. The third part of the tools 
that we have is what we call as expert services. So some of you, there will definitely be scenarios when you are in struggling phase and you are not able to get out of it by yourself. In all such scenarios, I'm not talking about when you actually get into a, what is called as a clinical depression phase, much, much before that. When you get into a phase of hopelessness where you are not able to recover or when you get into a, a phase where your sadness, your loneliness and your stress is taking over, you should be able to go talk to a counselor, go talk to a therapist, go visit a psychiatrist or get clinical intervention. So the platform provides you a capability to be able to get that clinical intervention through a host of experts. Also, you can also take what is called as allied therapy, which essentially means you can get help from professionals in a hobby of your choice, in an area that stimulates you, in something that is of interest to you. So it could, for some of you, it could be performing arts. So it could be music or art or dance or something. For some of you, it could be yoga or meditation. For some of you, it could be something spiritual. It could be naturopathy. It could be homeopathy. For some of you, it could be something else. There is variety of different levels of allied therapy and it is an extremely important part of mental health. You are able to get more mental health support for you by looking at and working through an area of your stimulation. And also on the platform at the top, last but definitely not the least, there is an area that we call as talk now. So when you open the app at the top, you would see overwhelmed with emotions right now talk to a soul counselor. And really this talk to a soul counselor is your first access whenever you need support. And it is available for you, uh, you know, no questions asked. And you can do that anonymously. All that you would need to do is click there. It will give you a small disclaimer. You click on it and you will be connected to a trained and proficient counselor. You can get support from them. You can talk about the areas that you are struggling with and they will be able to help guide you to what you should be doing in your life. They should be able to guide you to how can you get more mental wellness support for yourself, either through the platform or through a professional or through some other attribute, something else that you should consider or that should become part of your everyday life. Now, when we provide this platform, like we are talking about providing the platform to you, this is really what we provide. The first aspect is mental health awareness. This is where we do workshops, such as the workshop that we are doing right now. We do these workshops with various different communities. Second part is soul app integration, basically empowering and providing the soul app to you, which is something that we have talked about on this uh, section or in this workshop as well. The third part is screening and assessment. We just took the stress test, but we just took the stress. We didn't get time to look at our results even on the stress test. And then there are numerous different areas of mental health of importance to all of us. We should be able to look at these areas. We should be able to get specific support in these areas. The fourth area is what I call as soul interventions. So on an ongoing basis, we will be able to bring to you workshops similar to this. I don't mean similar in content to this. There could be a workshop on meditation. There could be a workshop on yoga. There could be a dance and movement therapy. There could be a music therapy. There could be a art, uh, art and uh, you know painting therapy and variety of different kinds of activities that can be done on an ongoing basis for you to engage in for you to get new perspectives and for you to be able to get mental wellness support. Fifth, you should be and you would be able to get individual counseling, counseling through a counselor, counseling through a trained professional, counseling through a trained psychologist or visiting or talking to a psychiatrist, depending on what you are facing and depending on what kind of support do you require. Sixth, last but definitely not the least, is what we call as an organizational dashboard. Number one, as an organization, as a structure, uh, you know, so considering Rajiv Gandhi University, Rajiv Gandhi University should be able to manage this as a program that they make available to all the students in the institute. I want everybody on this call 
to number one, be extremely certain, extremely sure, and be assured. Anything that you do on the platform is absolutely never made available to the university. We have an extremely strict policy that individual user data can never be made available to the institute. Many of us, while we are looking at our mental health, we suffer from either the fear of stigma, so the fear of being judged, or the fear of information that we share being misused. And that is one of the areas why we choose to not get help in many cases. I want to assure each and everyone that when we use the Soul Wellness app, that information, that data is absolutely never shared with your organization. We do consolidate a set of data and we provide it to the organization saying, you know, 50% of people in your institute have stress levels that are unreasonable or 30% of people in your institute have taken a counseling and, you know, uh, they should, you should consider this kind of intervention or this kind of capability. But I want to say this again, it is extremely important. None of the individual user data is ever shared with the organization. So you can use this platform and you can do everything from a mental wellness perspective using the platform without having the fear of being judged, without having the fear of any information that you share being misused and without having the fear of anyone knowing what you are going through in your life. Mental health is something which is very unique to each one of you, which is an individualistic phenomena and we always respect it that way. So what I want to do is I want to stop and I want to hear from you. Anybody has any questions, whether the question is about mental wellness, whether the question is about some specific aspect of their life, whether it is about the platform or anything else. This is your chance to ask the question right now, or you can simply ask that question on talk now, or you can go to soul wellness on social. And of course, you can ask the question there as well. So let me stop here and let me take questions from you. For those of you who are not able to speak because of the bandwidth, you can even go to the chat on the Zoom and you can ask your question there as well. So does anybody have any questions? I mean, as I said, you can ask the question here, you can type the questions on the chat, or you can of course ask the question later on through talk now or uh, through other mechanism. Uh, I do understand that mental health is a reasonably sensitive issue. And many of us are not very comfortable talking about our personal lives on this kind of a stage. And it is absolutely understandable. In that case, what you can do is you can go to the platform or you can go to the talk now aspect of the uh, soul wellness application or you can go to journaling area and you can ask your specific questions there as well. So one question that has been asked is why people often get confused in decision making. So people get confused because decision making essentially do we go through quandaries. Everything in life is a choice. And with every choice in life, there are many things that come bundled. So it is not really a choice to not study. It is also a choice to not study so you may not get good grades. Not get good grades, which means you may not have as good of a career as you want or something else. So the reason people normally get confused is they are not able to really look at the entire manifestation or look at the entire pros and cons of your decision. For those of you that suffer from it usual in a usual everyday manner, what I suggest is start making sheets. I know I'm asking you to, you know, uh, be more disciplined or get out a pen and paper, write pros and cons, but take the choices that you have and write what are the pros and what are the cons of it and write them in a more minuter detail than you otherwise would. So if it is a decision to go to a party, 
figure out what will you get when you go to the party you will get happiness you will get to meet your friends you will get to party you will get to eat good food and blah 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 and then on the right uh, on the other side on the con side right what is it that you would lose by going to the party and this pros and cons is really what will help you with making your decision better at the same time start thinking about from a short term perspective from a medium term perspective and from a long term perspective your specific decision how will it impact your mental health one thing that will happen with you after you hang up or after you go out of this workshop is this one specific phenomena many of you in various decisions and various actions of your life will start thinking about how is your mental health being impacted by doing this and when you will do that you will start realizing what you were doing earlier and your decisions will essentially become more acceptable to you i'm not saying your decisions will essentially change in everything but your decisions will be done with a lot more reservation with a lot more confidence and with a lot less confusion so there is another question here why do we get angry when we get stressed kindly give me some anger management tricks well um we get angry because when we get stressed because our emotions at that point of time are not in our control because we are figuring out and trying to work out how do we get normal how do we get to a state of balance and equilibrium that i talked about at the beginning see um think about a pendulum you need your life to stay as the middle baseline equilibrium point of the pendulum but what you are doing is you are going from left to right and from left to right in your life when you have stress this left to right motion is more amplified and when it becomes more amplified all your emotions start to go towards an amplified zone anger being one of those emotions so every time you will get stressed you will also get angry one of the best mechanisms that i can tell you to get less angry is to one go through simple small activities one activity is the box breathing that we talked about in the beginning i mean every time you get overly stressed just do this you know breathe in and breathe out three times and you will feel better the other thing that i always recommend to people whenever you get into kind of an uncontrolled state of anger simply count from 1 to 10 so simply just close your fist and say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 similar to what we did with box breathing for a few seconds you will be able to disassociate with what you were going through in terms of stress and it will be extremely useful extremely beneficial extremely therapeutic for all of you along with that whenever you go through stages of high stress do journaling use support groups use various self help tools or community support tools and everything that i talked about and at the same time when we get to extreme stages please don't struggle with it please go and get expert intervention right away you don't have to you know have a typhoid for you to go to a doctor you could have a normal cold and go to a doctor and get a uh, you know get support for yourself and that's what you should be doing with mental health as well so for everyone it is extremely important to define and work through coping mechanisms defense mechanisms for you and every individual will have different coping mechanisms but what you need to do is to look at yourself do a certain level of evaluation figure out what works for you and develop coping mechanisms in a known explicit manner for yourself don't don't just you know stop at using subconscious or using what comes you know naturally to you at times it is important for you to look at what are the coping mechanisms you should create and build that in your life next question is how do we know if it's actually burnout or extreme stress or depression well um first of all whenever you want to measure or whenever you want to do a certain evaluation you can do a screening test in the self assessment area on the platform 
it will give you the first indicator. Now, I'm not suggesting this is a replacement of a clinical uh, study, but this will give you the first impression. Second, every time you go through burnout or stress or depression, start using or start getting mental health support. The first aspect of that mental health support is you looking at your environment and trying to develop coping mechanisms for yourself. The second aspect of you getting mental wellness support is really using the soul wellness platform where there is a variety of different tools and solutions that are made available to you. The third aspect is going out and seeking some professional help if that is what you think will help you. And the fourth aspect, if you get to that, is essentially to look at a pharma neuro intervention if in case you come up with or you are diagnosed with clinical depression. But important is for you to start using, start doing something right away. Don't worry with whether it is burnout or extreme stress or depression. Figure out by yourself using the platform, talking to an expert or how you are able to recover from it and focus on that. The next aspect is, can you advise some healthy stress coping techniques? For me, the first healthy stress coping uh, technique is to go back to the basics. And when, what I mean by go back to the basics, number one, watch what you eat. I'm not suggesting watch what you eat because you will lose your physical health. But watch what you will eat because that will give you the nutrients that you require for your mental health. Specifically, when you are a student, specifically when you are in, uh, in academics, you need to ensure your diet has a high amount of protein. You require that protein. You require that ability to be able to function appropriately in academics. Number two, and it is extremely important, hydrate yourself well. Drink enough water in the day. I understand it is winters right now. But ensure even in the extreme of winters, you are drinking two liters of water every day. Ideally, you should be thinking about doing four liters every day. But I know sometimes that is just not possible. In winters, it's not going to happen. But look at the amount of water that you drink. So keep yourself hydrated. Number three, ensure you get optimal sleep. Now, I don't want to suggest at all what is optimal sleep. For some people, that optimal sleep, I mean, let me give you my example. For me, my optimal sleep is somewhere between four to five hours a day. Now, some of you would look at it and say, well, that is unhealthy. I'm, I, I mean, uh, I don't think there is a well-defined definition of what is an optimal sleep, but figure that out for yourself individually. If you need eight hours of sleep or 10 hours of sleep, and you know, some of you uh, may even require more than 10 hours, you get that. Don't bother with other parts of your life. Ensure you get the right amount of sleep that you require for yourself and determine it for yourself. Fourth part, ensure you do some breathing, some breathing capabilities every day. It doesn't take long. For me, my breathing exercises are essentially something that I do in the car every day and I spend 10 minutes at it. And that takes care of you know my life. Fifth, last but definitely not the least, incorporate some kind of physical activity, some kind of exercising in your life to stay healthy. And again, I'm not suggesting this for your physical health, while that has a direct correlation to your mental health. But that really gives you, um, you know, uh, those filters that gives you that time frame, that gives you that bandwidth to be able to think, to be able to be with yourself, to be able to, uh, you know, analyze what is going on in your life. Okay. The next question is, can procrastination be called one of the coping mechanism? Can you please advise us on how to overcome procrastination? Well, I, I think I already mentioned in uh, my presentation earlier, procrastination is absolutely a defense mechanism, a coping mechanism for many people, okay, for many of us. Now, the first aspect that you should think about if you are procrastinating is why are you procrastinating? Is it because you have the fear of failure? Is it because you don't know where to start? Is it because you think there is something else that is missing because of which you are not able to do something? 
So there are variety of different toolkits, programs and all uh, that you would need to look at as you are looking at overcoming procrastination. But first, it starts with you doing a deeper analysis. Again, use the 16-hour theory. So think about every action and every decision in your life is determined and influenced and it is working through optimizing your mental health. So if you are somebody who is procrastinating, why are you procrastinating? So start doing that analysis for yourself. Start doing that, you know, uh, look through at tools and capabilities and, you know, courses and other toolkits and all that are available. Then if you are not able to help participate in some support groups that may be related to procrastination and then take it from there and get support. Okay. Hey, wonderful. So we have had many people that have come up with questions. Um, as I said earlier, if anybody has any questions after this session, you can definitely go to the platform and you can ask your questions there. Or if there is anything, any other support, anything you require, we are always here. So Soul Wellness, we want to become the platform that makes mental health available to all of you. Our focus is to ensure mental health becomes a global priority for everyone. We think, as I said earlier, for some of you, a bad day could mean your, your efficiency is impacted by 20%. For some of you, it is impacted by 100%. My mission, my vision, my view is to help bridge that gap and ensure most of you are able to perform at slightly more efficient level and be able to do more, accomplish more and achieve more in your life. And do all of that while being more happy and while being more at peace with you. So with that, um, from my perspective, uh, I have come to the end. Uh, if there are, okay, there is another question uh, here. Why our brain gets blank in certain situations? For example, in performing stage, how to overcome nervousness in public speaking? See, this is a loaded question. I mean, uh, I can't give you a straightaway response because for every individual, public speaking comes up with different set of uh, challenges. I can tell you when I was 11 year old, I remember there was a time when I was asked to go on stage. I was in sixth standard. I was asked to go on stage. I had to give a speech. I went there and I froze. I literally couldn't utter a word. I came off of that stage. And for many people who have had this, uh, you know, this story, this is not my story. This happens very normally with, uh, with people. For many of us, when we get off the stage, our life becomes, I am not good at public speaking. I should never do it. And then that stays with them forever. In my case, when I got off of the stage, I said to myself, you are better than this. You can certainly do this. Yeah, you had a blip. Yeah, you couldn't perform today, but you are good at public speaking. And here I am. Um, you know, I can do public speaking at almost all stage. I can tell you, I have done public speaking in forums where there have been, you know, almost uh, 15, 20 member of parliament sitting. I have been done public speaking where there have been, you know, numerous leaders, uh, both from a business perspective or from a government perspective or from an international global perspective uh, that have been sitting. So uh, overcoming public uh, public speaking, the nervousness associated with it, there are simple tools and tricks that you can use. Okay, um, some of those we can talk about, you know, in a later, I think it will require a session of its own to talk about public speaking, but there are definitely some easy techniques that you can use. And then you will need to develop coping mechanisms for yourself every time you are going on a stage. One last question that is there. Is there any standard tool to assess mental health for all ages? Well, first part of being able to assess mental health is the tool that I just gave you, which is the self-assessment on the soul platform. There are numerous different screening tests there. There are nearly, I think, 15 or so screening tests that are available on the platform that can help you do an analysis of various aspects of your mental health. Now, what is on the platform are screening tests only. I do not want you to consider or do not want you to look at them as diagnostic tests. If you are looking for a diagnostic solution, then you would need to visit or you would need to work with a certified counselor who can help you 
go through these programs who can help do an analysis and give you you know your mental health question if you want to look at it that way but really to give you an analysis of various areas of your life what is working what is not working where you should get help and stuff like that last of course use the soul wellness platform to be able to get and to be able to connect with more like minded people that may be in similar uh, you know uh, in similar zones to you in their lives and then you can do that analysis by yourself as well so with that thank you so much everyone for asking these questions uh, dr prashanto i'll uh, turn it back to you yeah am i audible yes sir you are audible okay uh, thank you uh, mr gupta and the whole team of uh, mental health and the soul wellness who have been uh, providing all the insight today to all of our students and some of the faculty members have also joined so on behalf of rajiv gandhi university central university in rono hills arunachal pradesh we re we are really grateful for providing our students this opportunity to interact with this uh, mental health related application and i hope the students will be uh, joining further and using the app as a screening tool for certain uh, you know uh, mental health related disorders or maybe certain kind of anxiety or stress